Auzu Billah. So as I mentioned, we have with us tonight a very esteemed Sheikh and scholar, Maulana Siddiq Ahmad Nasir. And even though we enjoy the Qasidas and it helps us to build that love and increase that feeling, that connection with our beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we also want to take the opportunity to, you know, hear a couple messages that can serve to uh, reinvigorate our hearts and help to build that special relationship with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So without further ado, I now invite Maulana Nasir to address us for a few moments, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah al-wahid al-abadi, wa salatu wa salamu ala al-nabi al-ummi al-arabi, al-munazzali alayhi inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi, ya ayu al-lazina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. اللهم صل وسلم وزد وتفضل وتبارك ونعم على أفضل الموجودات وأحسن الموجودات وأجمل الموجودات سيد السادات سيدنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى the all merciful selected a name for his beloved about which name the companion حسان بن ثابت composed the verse and he said وَضَمَّ الْإِلَهُ اسْمَ النَّبِي إِلَى اسْمِهِ إِذَا قَالَ فِي الْخَمْسِ الْمُؤَذِّنُ أَشْهَدُ وَشَقَّ لَهُ مِنْ اسْمِهِ لِيُجِلَّهُ فَذُو الْعَرْشِ مَحْمُودٌ وَهَذَا مُحَمَّدُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has joined the name of the Prophet of his beloved to his name when the Mu'addin says أَشْهَدُ in the five daily salawat he says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, and he says, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And he, Allah, has split his name for the sake of the Prophet, in order to uh, exalt the Prophet. So the owner of the arsh is Mahmud, and this is Muhammad. The owner of the arsh is Mahmud, and Allah split that name Mahmud to make Muhammad. And Mahmud means the one who is praised. And Muhammad means the one who is praised much and repeatedly and time after time. The beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Unfortunately, we have misguided Muslims today who follow a misguided interpretation of a hadith of the beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and have become fearful of praising the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because they think, they may be committing shirk. The beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, and this hadith is transmitted by Imam al-Bukhari, لَا تُطْرُونِي كَمَا أَطْرَتِ النَّصَارَ بْنَ مَرْيَمْ فَإِنَّمَا أَنَا عَبْدِ فَقُولُوا عَبْدُ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولُ Which they misguidedly translate as, do not lavish praise on me as the Christians did to the son of Maryam, that is Isa alayhi salam. For I am only a slave, so say the slave of Allah and his messenger. So they misguidedly translated the words of the beloved messenger as do not lavish praise on me. A little knowledge is always a dangerous thing. The beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do not do to me what the Christians did to the son of Maryam, Isa alayhi salam. What did the Christians do to Isa alayhi salam? Did they praise him? No. They insulted him. They lied therein. And when we look in the lexicon for the word that the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi salam used, itra. Itra, yes, it means lavish praise. But lavish praise does not, it cannot be used in this hadith. Because the Christians did not lavish praise on Isa alayhi salam. They insulted him. They lied. When we look at the lexicon, we see the meaning that is applicable in this hadith. And the meaning, in, according to the lexicon, is to exceed the just, just and usual bounds in praising someone and lie therein. So what the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said was, do not exceed the just and usual bounds in praising me and lie therein. As the Christians exceeded the just and usual bounds in praising Isa, the son of Maryam and lied therein. For I am only an abd. I am only a slave of Allah. I am not son of Allah. I am not Allah, a part of the Godhead. I am a slave. So say the slave of Allah and 
the, servant, the messenger of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, when we look at the lives of the companions, we find that they praised him. They praised him, it is their very lives. They praised him in verse, they praised him in prose. They praised him, the beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we see in the hadith literature so many verses of praise from the companions to the beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But we, because of time, we just look, when the beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, departed from this physical world, Sayyidatul Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha went to his grave and she took some of the dust of the grave and put it on her eyes. And she recited, she recited this. Mada ala man shamma turbata ahmada alla ya shumma mada zamani khawaliya. Subbat alayya musaibun awla wa annaha subbat ala al ayyami udna layaliya. What is the matter with the one who smells the dust of Ahmad? That for the rest of time he does not want to smell the most fragrant of fragrances because the dust is more fragrant. What is the matter with the one who smells the dust of Ahmad? That for the rest of time he does not want to smell the most, the fragrant, the most fragrant of fragrances. Those kinds of calamities have befallen me. That is the passing of the beloved messenger. Those kinds of calamities have befallen me. Were such calamities to befall the days, the days would have changed into nights. This is Sayyidatuna Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha praising the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just after he departed from this physical world because she departed from this physical world just about six months after the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah An-Nisa Surah number 4, ayah number 64. وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولُ لَوَجَدُوا اللَّهُ تَوَّابًا رَحِيمًا If they, Surah 4, verse 64, if they, when they wronged themselves, had come to you, they had come to you, O Prophet, and they begged for forgiveness from Allah, and the Messenger asked for forgiveness for them, they would certainly have found Allah of returning and most merciful. So, Imam Ibn Kathir, in his tafsir, transmits an incident that a very righteous servant of Allah, al uthbi was sitting by the grave of the Prophet ﷺ. This is in the tafsir of Imam Ibn Kathir. When a desert Arab came to the grave of the Prophet, and he said, he greeted the Prophet ﷺ, and he said, I have heard Allah saying these words. If they, when they wronged themselves, they had come to you and they asked forgiveness from Allah, and the messenger asked forgiveness for them. They would certainly have found Allah of returning most merciful. And he said, I have heard these words, and I have come to you, O Prophet. And I ask for forgiveness from Allah, and I take you to intercede for me with Allah. And then he recited two lines of poetry. Two lines of poetry. Ya khayra man dhufinat bi فَطَابَ مِنْ تِيبِهِنَّ الْقَاءُ وَالْأَكَمُ Oh, the best of, best whose bones are interred in this room. And the, ro the room and the space has become perfumed because of the fragrance of the bones. نَفْسِ الْفِدَاءُ لِقَبْرٍ أَنْتِ سَاكِنُهُ فِيهِ الْأَفَافُ وَفِيهِ الْجُودُ وَالْقَرْمُ Myself is ransomed to the grave in which you, O Prophet, are residing. For in it is afaf and in it is generosity and nobility. And the desert Arab left. And Imam Ibn Kaisi transmits that al to be said, sleep overcame him. And he saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, go and catch that desert Arab and tell him that Allah has forgiven him. Now this verse of poetry, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses people to go, to visit the beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they don't see this. But at the grave of the beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when you are standing to send salam on him sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there are two pillars at the side, and these two lines of poetry are inscribed on those two, two pillars, and they have been inscribed there for all the centuries, indicating the authenticity of this event. Ya khayra man dufinat bi qay adumuhu. 
فطاب بنتيبه ان فطاب بتيبه ان قوى الاكمو نفس الفد on one pillar and on the other one نفس الفداء لقبر انت ساكنه فيه العفاف وفيه الجود والكرم so this desert arab came and addressed the prophet and praised him so let us never be afraid to praise the beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named him as the one who is highly praised who is praised repeatedly who is praised time and time again the beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we need therefore to understand it is not possible it is not possible to overpraise the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is why al imam al busiri says in qasidatul burda Abandon that which the Christians claim about their prophet. They claim that he is God and son of God. And after you have abandoned that, then you, ask, you attribute any kind of nobility you think to him. Whatever nobility you wish to ascribe to his person, ascribe. Once we la qadrihi ma shi'ti min sharaf min sharaf um ascribe to min izami ascribe to his rank rank any grandeur that you wish for inna fadla rasulillahi laysa lahu haddun fa yurima an hunatikum bi fami for verily the virtues and excellence of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam are such that it is not possible for a speaker to describe them with his mouth So no matter how much we praise him after we have abandoned that which the Christians claim once we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is creator and the beloved messenger sallam is created it is not possible to praise him more than he deserves to be praised we cannot even praise him as he deserves to be praised that is why in a very famous verse you know we are told la yumkinu thanahu kama kana haqqahu it is not possible to praise him as he deserves to be praised لا يمكن الثناء كما كان حقه yes the this the next the next line is um, you know that كسا uh, مختصر to make the story short after Allah it is you who are worthy of all praise and respect and love and so on so Malana Abdul Alim Siddiqui Ramtulai Taala I used to recite a munajat before his Uh, lectures and that munajat the first two lines are these ilahi wo zaban de jo sana khan e muhammad ho sana aisi jo har aina shayan e muhammad ho subhanallah sallam o allah give me that tongue that can praise muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with a praise that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is deserving of every moment with a praise that every moment muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is deserving of Give me a tongue that can praise Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam like this. So he is the one who is highly praised. The companions praised him. When we look, we see, you know, praised by Sayyidina Ali, praised by Sayyidina Abbas, and so on. Rabbi Allah Taala anhu, the companions, and the tabi'een, the tabi tabi'een, and right up to today, praising the beloved Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This, we need to bear in mind. is something that purifies the heart that lifts exalts in individual in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so let us praise the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but in order to praise him properly we need to be studying his life and his teachings and his example then we can know to praise him when we look at the characteristics of the beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam we are there are things that are so amazing that we can't understand the beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam is reported to have said that gold and silk are haram for the males of my ummah and halal for the females of my ummah and there was a discussion as to whether a garment that is not made of silk but has a border of silk whether it was permissible for a male to wear it 
and Sayyidatuna Asma, the sister of Sayyidatuna Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anhu ba. She brought out a garment of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to show them that it had a border of silk. So indicating that a garment that is not made of silk but had a, only had a border of silk, it is permissible for a male to wear. And then she went on to say, this garment was in the possession of Sayyidatuna Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. And Sayyidatuna Aisha radiallahu ta'ala passed away more than 40 years after the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when she passed away, this garment came into my possession. And the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to wear this garment. And then she said, we wash it for the people who are sick, seeking a cure thereby. We wash it now. Right? So it means more than 50 years after the beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the, com the commentators of the Hadith tell us they used to soak it in water and squeeze the water out and give that water to people who are sick. We wash it for the people who are sick, seeking a cure thereby. What was it in that garment that the beloved messenger wore? That for 10 years and 20 years and 30 years and 40 years and 50 years and 60 years, the companions were still, because it was the companions, Sayyidatuna Asma, Rajalotana, one of the companions. They were still using it to get cure, to seek cure for the people who are sick. It was worn by the beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, tonight, as we are here to listen to Qasidas, nats in praise of the beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, let us remind ourselves that this is an activity that we should engage in not rarely, but regularly. And, and let us bear in mind that we need to be praising the one who Allah, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named as the one who is praised much and repeatedly and time after time. And that is why Hassan ibn Thabit radiallahu ta'ala says that Fadul Arshi Mahmoodun Bahada Muhammadu. The owner of the Arsh, Allah, is Mahmood, one who is praised. And this is Muhammad, the one who is praised much and repeatedly and time after time. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the tawfiq of studying his life, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, more and more, and striving to follow him more and more. And cultivating that love for him more and more and praising him more and more. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide and bless us all. And may he reward Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on our behalf. As he, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, deserves to be rewarded. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammadin fi kulli lamhati wa nafas. Adada ma wasiyahu ilmuk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar Narae Risalat Ya Rasulullah Narae Risalat